Also in this field, Ali Hoare, the Australian record holder. He finished 11th in his debut in Tokyo at the Olympics. He missed the World Championships last year. He was dealing with a sports hernia, shut his season down early because he said he really wanted to focus on this year and making the team to Paris. And then Matthew Centrowitz has said this will be his last year, the Olympic champion in Rio, trying to get back to that form that took him all the way to gold. Hey, we, we, we were in that stadium for that yeah. magical run. There's a bunch of kids that are going to grow up and get interviewed on NBC, and they'll say, hey, I watched Matt, Matt Centrowitz win the U.S.'s first 1,500-meter Olympic title in 108 years, and that's when I decided I wanted to run the mile. Six-time U.S. champion is Centrowitz. Again, has announced this will be his last year. See Craig Engels there, always with those, sporting those fun locks. And how about the 17-year-old Australian Cameron Myers has joined the field. He's a high school senior. Kind of harkens back to the uh, days when we saw Jakob Ingebrigtsen at the Prefontaine Classic giving these youngsters the chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world's best. Yeah, how good is he? He was fifth at the Australian Championships. Of course, their seasons are flipped. They've already had their championships for the year. So Abe Alvarado is going to be the pace setter here. And this one also set up to be fast. The target time, 331. The world lead, 331.96, held by Reynold Chariot. And he is in the race as well. But Ali Hoare is going to set the pace behind that group, along with Vincent Ciotti. As you look at the rest of the field, talented Americans that include Sam Prakel and others. And Matthew Centrowitz, the Rio Olympic champion, settling in there around fifth. And Hoare, they're also leading that second pack, or fr I guess front pack, right behind the pacer. Uh, what I love about him as well, Paul, is not that he's only focused on being the best on the track. He also wants to be a shining light in the Sport. He's doing the podcast and really trying to bring a lot of visibility to the athletes in this event. And, you know, I just I've really enjoyed watching him compete, but also all the things that he's doing off of the track as well. See the tallest of the figures there in the middle. That's Adam Fogg of Great Britain as Chariot goes alongside him and then up alongside Ciotti and Ali Hoare continuing to kind of control the rest of the field behind him, giving about seven, eight meters ahead to the pace setter Alvarado. But the bulk of that group right on that green and the confluence of the blue light and the green light, that is the target. So the pace setter often is a little bit further ahead of it. And now Chariot asserts himself and now moves to the lead and Fogg moves up alongside Hoare. But everybody's still in this race now with two laps to go. Yeah, Chariot definitely had had enough of where he was and decided he wanted to make sure this pace was a little quicker. So he injected a little bit of pace once he took the lead. And they'll have two once they're done with this lap. The world under 20 world champion at 1500 meter. He really burst on the scene uh, when he competed there. Competes for Kenya. Like you mentioned, Paul, he is the world lead at the moment. It looks like Alvarado's had enough. He is ready to relinquish his front running duties. Things beginning to wind up pretty good. Cameron Myers, the 17-year-old from Australia, there on the outside in lane number two. You know, the Australians, because of their season, had their national championships more recently, so they're actually in a peak right now and usually competing pretty well in this stretch of the season. Yeah, we see that indoors, and we certainly see it in the beginning of the outdoor season. And look at the youngster there, Cameron Myers, who we talked about making that big move. And I mean, the pack all still very much in it. This is really bunched up with one lap to go. People are out in lane three, <laughs> you know, trying to stay with it. I love it. So as they head to the back stretch the last time, Chariot, Fogg, Hoare, then the teenager Myers, Jesse Hunt of Australia in the black there. That's Eric Holt of the United States, fourth in the U.S. final back in 2022. Matthew Centrowitz kind of caught there on the inside, looking, trying to get outside and maybe get back into this thing as they come around and wind up for home. Myers made a move and he wasn't able to get to the front, so now he's got to hang on. The two youngsters battling it out, the home stretch. Should remind everyone that Chariot's also a teenager, 19, as he has the fastest time in the world this year. And here comes Ollie Hoare, Central back in third, and it's going to be Ollie Hoare, the 
comes through with a winning time. Just a shade over 3 four, 334, but a, a patient game. And wearing those shades, <laughs> if you're going to wear shades, you better win. You better show up. <laughs> you better show up. And he did. No big surprise there. We talked about it. You know, he just came off of his championship so he's in peak shape there's Myers there making the big move and that's when the youngster the two youngsters 19 and 17 there in the front responded to it and maybe that's what cost them in the home stretch because a lot of times when you have to answer and kick multiple times it really wears on your legs and that's where Hoar using his experience stepped on the outside here and had the best finish also, great run there from Matthew Centrowitz, you know, coming up there for third. That's a big run for him. He hasn't looked like his old self in many years, and I think that should give him a lot of confidence going into the Olympic trials. Horace coming off his best year ever, 329.41 last year for an oceanic record. And he's looking pretty good this year as well. Well, let's bring in the fourth member of our team for the first time today. Say hello to Lewis Johnson. Luke. Hey, Paul, thanks so much. So, Ali here, great clothes, and we're kind of curious about just the season's so far, and especially because you guys are flipped from the United States being down under. How did all that come into play here? Yeah, no, it's a lot of pressure for us early in April. That's kind of when our season, domestic season, is kind of really important. And uh, as you can see, Cam Myers and Jesse Hanna trying to chase uh, position on that Olympic team for us, and so am I. And yeah, it's it's a hard situation, but we take advantage of it. We're able to come over here, continue the season, compete with amazing athletes, and obviously being a part of this meet is a huge privilege. So we're just happy to be here and keep competing, and hopefully how position gets uh, clearer later on. Awesome. Great to see you here. We look forward to seeing you in Paris. Good to see you. Paul? Made the Olympic final in 